Hey YouTube, it's Wes. Hope you guys are doing great. It's kind of a slow day in the crypto world today, at least kind of, but behind the scenes, huge things are happening, especially for Ethereum. You guys know I've been down on Ethereum quite a bit. I still own a lot of it. I am a big believer in its capability, but boy, you talk about a project that has been for years sidelined with high fees, a slow movement from proof of work to proof of stake and challenges across the way, but they are making progress. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the progress that's been made literally today that bodes very well for its future and going to share in layman's simple terms what the heck that news is all about. It's about shadow forking and it's something that no one's really talking about. So I'm going to handle a little bit of what it is at an ELI 5 level so you can understand it. You don't want to go away. All of this and a whole bunch more coming right up. <laughs> Hey friends, thanks again for joining me on this journey. Hit like, hit subscribe, really appreciate you guys sticking with me as we journey all the way up to 100,000 subs. I'm really pumped about that. It's gonna happen this year, at least I think, but only when you guys hit the like and subscribe button. It's been a huge personal goal of mine to get one of those creator awards, and I'm on the cusp. We're at like 75,000 subs, just 25,000 away. I'm convinced we can make it. it. It only comes from you guys as well. So huge shout out and huge thank you to all of you. And if you're just now coming into this channel, really glad you stopped by. I love talking about crypto in simple terms. Don't do any moon pumping. There's no price speculation. I'm never going to tell you this project's going to the moon and this one's going to sink only to be wrong tomorrow because that's how all YouTubers, at least the ones that price speculate, do it. They don't know what they're talking about. If you listen to YouTubers, you're going to go broke. Don't do that stuff. OK, so let's jump into all of the news here. And, you know, the markets are slow today, right? Most things are down. I did see Safe Moon peak in here at 192 percent growth. If you if you watch my channel at all, I always tell everyone never, ever, ever look like they shouldn't even have these. I hate that coin market cap even has these on their site. The biggest gainers and the recently well recently added is OK, but biggest gainers never listen to that stuff. But I think this is the Safe Moon version version two stuff that had come out. Uh, I, I don't know, but that's probably where it's coming from. Um, but I, I was shocked by that. These other big gainers that you'll occasionally see on here, um, typically they're like just released or they just got pumped up. Um, so so just because this one's, oh, 697%, I missed out on it. No, you didn't. No, don't go invest in it either. You'll be sorry if you did. Probably. I don't know anything about Goblin, but I'm just saying across the board, 99.999% of biggest gainers, uh, it's a short term blip on the radar, flash in the pan. And I wish that coin market cap didn't even have that front and center. OK, so looking at the rest of the market, things are down, right? Uh, maybe it's the post Bitcoin conference news. Man, I was going to go to that. And I didn't. I missed out. If you guys were there, let me know what you thought of it. I am going to the consensus conference, though, coming up in Austin this summer. Very excited about that. So if any of you are planning on going to that, I uh, would love to meet up with with you fine folks there uh, at consensus. It's going to be a lot of fun. OK, so taking a peek here, um, markets are down, right? Not great. A lot of people are saying it's just the sell the news post Bitcoin conference rumors. I don't think that there's enough evidence for that, but we just know the markets are down right now. OK, so that kind of creates some slowness in the market. And what's funny about slowness in the market, a market where like things like big things aren't really happening is I've said this before on the channel. These are opportunities for the good stuff to get done, right? When the hype cycles are at all time highs, there's so much buzz in the marketplace and inflated expectations, and it's hard for us to be grounded in reality. And then when the markets kind of go back down, that's the time we get to pull back, the hype is gone, and we can really understand what's happening right now in the market. Like what are some big trends that we're seeing or new things being worked on? And as it turns out, Ethereum has one. So Ethereum's big news is that for the very first time, their shadow fork has gone live literally today. It was being worked on for the past few weeks and way before that. But like it's actually going into um, going beyond testing. It's actually live on the mainnet. Now, this is an important part of the journey of Ethereum. So here's the thing with Ethereum. It's a number two crypto that's out there. We know that. And they can't make sweeping changes super quickly because they could destroy the entire platform if they go too quick. So they're risk averse and they're careful and they're slow and they're methodical. And 
that's just the only way to do it. I know when you look at other great projects that are proof of stake, like one of my favorite ecosystems is Cosmos. And looking at what Cosmos is doing as a true innovator, looking at Solana, Polkadot, all these other major top 10 cryptos that are out there that are already proof of stake. It's easy for us to think, just go do it, Ethereum. Like you, you suck. Your prices are great, but like the transaction fees and the gas burn is so stinking high. Just go do what the others are doing. And they're working towards it, but it takes a long time. There's a lot of testing before they can get there, a whole lot of testing and a lot of complex things. I wouldn't pretend to know all of it, but shadow forking is a big piece because this is a, a this is a way to sort of like prove that this is going to work. It's sort of a way of like load balancing and testing. Can these changes actually work? And you can test them all day long in test nets, but to test it live on Ethereum is one of the, the critical components of the proof of uh, the proof of stake capabilities. So I want to show you a news article that talks about this a little bit, and then I'm gonna demystify it for you. Uh, so this right here comes from Coindesk. I love Coindesk. Ethereum's first mainnet shadow fork goes live is moved to proof of stake continues. So Ethereum's moving that way. They're getting to proof of stake. They want to be there. They're not there yet, right? And so uh, they talk about the first fork went live today. I'm gonna show you some, Some uh, I'm actually gonna show it to you in a minute. Uh, and they say the shadow fork is a way to stress test our assumptions about sinking and state growth. In other words, they're saying, look, we, we know how to get to proof of stake, but it in order to get there, we've got to stress test. We've got to make sure it can handle load. If we push everything immediately or too quickly and it fails and falls down, we could destroy Ethereum as we know it. We don't want to have that happen. So it's better for them to be slow and methodical, right? And so this is what they're talking about. We know that currently Ethereum is proof of work, just like Bitcoin. And people, if there's one criticism of Bitcoin, while it's the most stable, most highly valued crypto that's out there, it is extremely electricity heavy because of the proof of work mechanism. So Ethereum's trying to get away from that and get to proof of stake like others that are out there, but it's taking some time. It also is slow. And we know that this they're working towards speeding up uh, the, the, the time for transactions and lowering the, the fees inside of it. So there's a lot that they have to do. And Ethereum, just because it's a stalwart, they have to be very careful about how they make this happen. Um, so they also talked a little bit about like, this is like a, like here it is, a, a historical event. Is it really a historical event? I mean, yes, it is, right? It's definitely a historical event in the sense that, you know, for the first time ever, um, we're, we're finally seeing stuff move over to what's called the POS beacon chain. So here's what all this means. Let me kind of demystify what this means so you can understand it a little bit a little bit better. So when we say shadow forking, here's kind of what's happening is shadow forking is a way of like taking transactions that are actually happening happening and mirroring them or like think of it as like creating a copy of them and then having that replica actually run on its own chain that's talking to the proof of stake beacon. So it's a way of saying OK, we have all these tons of transactions that are happening. Let's replicate them. This is what like a shadow fork is. It's like replicating a copy of them and having them run in the where the 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 proof of stake beacon is actually running and, and, and checking it. So it's a way of saying, can it actually run? Can it actually handle current transactions? We've done this in testnet, but now we're doing it live and we're going to see how it handles it. Can it handle the load? Can it scale well? That's what's happening. If you want to see it. I'll put a link in the video description, but here it is right here. Um, this is, let me go back to the beginning here. So this is explore.mainnetshadowfork1.ethdevops.io. So you can actually see that here. So it says 0% of blocks are being indexed because it's literally being shadowed and copied um, as we speak. Average block time is 14.8 uh, seconds. So you can see this is all actually happening, which is really, really cool. And you can see these transactions. Let me pull an actual successful transaction up. Here's one right here. And you can dive in and take a look at them, right? You can see it looks just like a normal uh, uh, Ethereum transaction. That's exactly what it is. The difference is this is running on the Ethereum shadow fork, which is just a replica copy that has mechanics for staking built into it. So the Ethereum team can test it and see what's happening. So what do I think about this? Like, what's the wh why am I covering this? Well, I'm covering this because I think it's important to understand that these are big things happening for Ethereum. Ethereum will get to proof of stake. Make no mistake about it. 
They're just being careful about it. They know the gas fees are high. They know transaction speed is slow, but they also know Ethereum is where almost all smart contracts reside. It's where the entire NFT marketplace, not the entire, but the vast majority of the NFT marketplace lives. And so much is being built on Ethereum, even with the high fees and slow transactions. In other words, Ethereum is still where it's at. Like it, hate it, that's the truth. Innovators are trying to disrupt that, which I think is good and healthy for the entire industry. I don't pick winners. I just love the technology. And so this shadow fork is a big deal to move this forward so that Ethereum can take that next huge step to getting to proof of stake just to make sure that it can handle the load and, and handle the stress test that they're putting on it. So there you have it. Uh, it's still gonna be a long time before proof of stake is out, but it is coming and it will come inside of Ethereum. That's it. There's the news for today. I thought it was pretty interesting. Would love to know what your comments, thoughts are around it. And hopefully now when you see all this shadow forking stuff, you'll know what we're talking about, at least at a high level, which is really good stuff. All right, my friends, thank you so very much.